Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to recap and explain a recently released horror film called Moloch. First, if you have not subscribed to my channel then please do it. It helps. The film is set in the countryside of the Netherlands. The year is 1991, we see an old house in around a bog. Inside the photo of a grandmother, her daughter, and her grandchild. This grandchild's name is Betraik and she was feeding the house mouse. Here suddenly she heard some screaming voices and the blood started dropping all around her. Now the story jumps 30 years forward. Betraik was now a widow and she had a daughter by the name of Hannah. She is a violinist, school teacher, and she used to record her own album. One afternoon while she was on one afternoon stand, she forgot to pick up her daughter from her school. Her mom Elsk picked her up from school and messaged Betraik about it. The relationship between Betraik and Elsk was not great. While coming back to her house she saw a man with a backpack staring at her. He was known as a bagman. Betraik was living with her dad Relof and mom Elsk after her husband's death. At the house we see town Sharif discussing something with Relof. Apparently, the bagman was digging up holes around this house which was illegal as well as creepy. Police had discovered something in one of those holes. They were here for further investigation. This night we see the bagman digging up a hole as if he was possessed. He saw something sinister behind him which spooked him. The next morning the police found his body in that hole and started an investigation. His father was here who was filled with grief. Betraik saw this on her way to school. The police had called a team of archaeologists from the city to dig further as what they found in that hole was pretty significant. Jonas was the lead guy here with Sonia, Leonard, and Radu as his members. These guys were excited as they discovered a bog woman body. This night Rita woke up from a bad dream. She heard noise from Elsk's room, upon checking Elsk was under a powerful Caesar. She was suffering from a mysterious illness, the doctors here were not sure what was causing this. Betraik helps her to breathe normally. Strangely here Hannah was also up as she also had a bad dream. Betraik picked her up and both started walking toward her room. On the way, she saw a guy standing in their courtyard which scared the shit out of her. She placed Hannah on her bed and started looking for this guy. Relof was also up as he too saw this guy. Betraik thought this guy might be the bagman as he was looking around the house for some time. She didn't know he had died. The next morning Relof started arguing with Jonas. Jonas didn't know the Danish language hence Betraik translated it for him. Relof thought one of Jonas's crew members was here last night. Relof was pretty agitated about these guys digging up the holes. There was a good reason for this which we will know soon. Jonas and Betraik introduced themselves to each other. Later in the day, Betraik took her mother Elsk to a local doctor, the doctor thought that Elsk's problem is not physical but psychological. She may need therapy. Relof places a camera surveillance system around his house which takes photos whenever someone walks across it. In the evening Betraik met Jonas at a local bar and these two had a good time. Betraik tells a funny behavior of her mom here. Her mom used to collect sugar sachets from restaurants and bars. The one you get as a complimentary. She used to collect them and pass them on to guests. There were other such weird behavioral things about Elsk that Betraik never really liked. She also talks about a family curse of hers as everybody in this town believed. Her grandmother was killed when she was 10. Her father became sort of crazy after that. He was institutionalized for many days. Her mother developed a mysterious illness and behavior changes. After marriage, Betraik moved to New York where her husband died in a road accident. She never engaged herself in any relationship after that. People in this town believed her family was the cursed one. After coming back from the bar Betraik saw her dad sitting outside. He was adamant that he will find the intruder this time. When she entered her house she sensed something odd. Suddenly a guy appeared in front of her from nowhere. By the looks of it, he was not all by himself, he was in some kind of a position. He apologized to Betraik for drinking her milk and scaring her like that. He wanted to talk to her but was struggling. Betraik quickly ran up to her mom's room. This guy followed her. These two scared ladies tried escaping but this guy started attacking Elsk with a knife. Betraik tried stopping him but he was strong, he pushed her away. 
He started strangling Elsk, clearly, he wanted to kill her. Betraik was shocked to see this. Just then Reloth hammed a hammer on his head and knocked him down. Later, police arrived and took him to the hospital. Turned out he was from Jonah's team. His name was Rude. The next morning Jonas came here and apologized. He and his crew member were also in shock as to how Rude could do such a thing. Here Elsk offers coffee to him, with free sugar sachet she collected. Later Jonas and Betrake talk in private, she was horrified by all this she believed in the curse and started crying. Downstairs Hannah was drawing something. Reloff believed this is the result of the popular legend prevailing in this town. Elsk disagreed and cautioned him about that as last time he ended up at an asylum due to that. After saying this, Elsk had a powerful seizure and she collapsed. Betraik took her to the hospital where doctors tried scanning her brain. As soon as the machine turned on Elsk's seizures started again. Hence they removed her from the machine without knowing what the heck is happening. Here Radu was also admitted who was on life support. Betraik sneakily saw his condition where his family and crew members were sitting beside him. Strangely one of Radu's daughters saw Betraik and stared at her. Later, she followed her to the elevator. By the look of her, it was clear that she was in some kind of possession. The kid in a creepy way started repeating new you merit. She grabbed Betrake's hand, the light started flickering and Betrake saw a ghostly figure in the mirror. This gave her a little panic attack. Betrake did a Google translate of the word as the kid was from Romania. Its meaning turns out to be, she never died. Betrake was confused as to who never died. What was that kid saying? Later at the bar, Jonas told Betrake about the mummy they discovered at the dig site. Here they meet a man whose son, named Mika, had died a couple of days back. He had also been digging like the others. Mitch's father says that he used to hear whispers, Helen's whispers. That is why he knew exactly where to dig. He talks about the famous folklore of the town, the legend of Feek. Like many in the town, he believed in the evil spirit of Halen who whispers to the weak and makes them do hideous things. He gave his number to Betrake for any help. Betrake knew this story of fake very well. It was an annual country festival with the school musical, procession, and whatnot. She was preparing kids for this musical. Till now she believed it like any other urban legend story of superstition. An excuse for people to celebrate. But now she was confused. Jonas found all this interesting and curious though he never believed in the superstitions like this. Later these two engaged in intimacy here. Jonas goes to his tent where they have discovered four more bodies. It was from the sites where Radu had dug up. Jonas found something strange here, all these women had their throats slit vertically. Here we see Leonard not feeling well. This night the image sensor takes a few photos as something moved in front of it. Reloff showed the images to the police chief the next day where it was not clear. Police dismissed it as a malfunction. Reloff was also a believer in the whispers, he thought all those who were digging up holes were in possession of Helen. The police chief being his friend consoled him as he knew his delusional episodes. Jonas asks Sonia to look into the legend of Feek. Sonia narrates it from the internet simultaneously, kids in Betreek's school perform it on stage. Many centuries ago, there used to be an evil lord named Walter. He had a wife named Helen, who was not only soaked in greed but also exercised a malign influence over her husband. Walter was a loose character guy, he had many illicit relationships with many of her wife's servants. He made one young lady Feek forcefully pregnant. After Helen knew Feek is pregnant with her husband's baby, she was enraged. She wanted to find a way to make Feek repent for her actions. She never blamed her own husband for betraying her trust. She created a fake narrative where she told the town dwellers that Feek was a witch and had possessed her husband. She called her a wicked sorceress and imprisoned her. Feek was heartbroken as she had to pay for the sins that she hadn't committed. She started praying to her god and demanding justice. Her prayers were answered by a pagan god named Moloch. The god of child sacrifice. She made a deal with this heathen god. She said that she would sacrifice herself if he promised that Helen would repent for subjecting her to such cruelty and abuse. Moloch agreed, but there was a catch. There was a cost to this retribution. Moloch would have a claim on Feek's unborn child. 
He says that it is a cage of vengeance, like a loop. He told her that history would keep repeating itself, and the unborn generations would keep paying the cost of the retribution. Thiek was so enwrapped in vengeance that she agrees to it. She slits her own throat in front of Helen. Moloch took Helen's life. Thiek is celebrated as a heroine and a beacon of light. Sonia further says people believe that Helen's evil spirit still rooms around this town. Consumed with rage and vengeance she whispers her lies to people by possessing them. Here we see the symbol of Moloch on the kid's forehead. At Hannah's school event, Betrake found Hannah's drawing where she had drawn a ghost. Similar to the one she saw in the elevator. Reloff missed Hannah's act as he was busy wiring around the house with bells. He wanted to identify the intruder with the help of bell sounds. Betrake met that old guy and started discussing the whispers. This guy was an aquarist, he had many different fishes in his tank. He says curious people always heard the voices, some believed it to be spiritual while others thought it was evil. Here Betrake was desperate for answers as her daughter Hannah was slowly drifting towards its influence. She wanted to hear those whispers. Hence the old man asked her to close her eyes and concentrate on his tapping sound. A few minutes later Betrake gets a vision of herself from the year 1991. The blood started pouring all around her. She saw her grandmother lying dead on the bed with her throat cut vertically. As Betrake came back to her senses, she saw all the fishes in the tank were dead. Fishes are sensitive to sound, the supernatural sound of whispers was so intense that it killed all of them. This spooked Betrake and she ran away from there to the dig site. There Jonas was not there he was out to attend the feet procession party. From Sonia, Betrake understood that these dead women belonged to different ears stretching back to the 16th century. They have found eight more bodies. Betrake said her family is in danger. We see Leonard walking around Betrake's house in a possessed state, he walks across the wire which causes the bell to ring. Reloff attacks him from behind with a teaser gun and knocks him down. He had a trowel. Betrake started packing her belongings as she wanted to run away from here with Hannah like Usain Bolt. Elsk thought she is hysterical but Betrake believed someone is killing their family females as a sacrifice for generations. Reloff now heard the bells ringing sound and loud whispers from all directions. Many ghostly ladies surround him. Strangely he saw Elsk in a ghostly form. Sonia narrated her incident with Betrake to Jonas which made him scared. Just then the people carried the procession of Moloch, they were singing and dancing. Back at Betrake's house, Reloff was completely in a possessed state, he had Leonard's trowel with him. He started attacking. Betrake locked Hannah in the same room where she was locked there in 1991. She and Elsk tried stopping Reloff, but he overpowered them. He started strangling Elsk. Betrake quickly hit him with a rod and knocked him down. When he woke up Betrake was upstairs, she was tied to a bed. As he moved up the stairs, someone threw a noose at him and hanged him. It was his wife Elsk who was now possessed. Jonas was running towards this house where his leg gets trapped in a bear trap. We see a few masked people entering the house who were chanting Moloch's name. Betrake was scared and confused seeing all this. Her mom told her it will end soon. She picked a blade, cut her throat vertically, and died. From the corpse rose a sinister thing that had Moloch's symbol on its forehead. Now Betrake gets a powerful Caesar. Jonas somehow arrives here, he calls the police, unfastened the ropes to which Betrake was tied, and makes her reunite with Hannah. A few days later, Jonas came back to the town and met Betrake. He offered her and Hannah to move in with him, but Betrake politely declined the offer. Her behavior was totally different from earlier's. She insisted on staying here in this town. While leaving, Betrick picked up the sachet of sugar from the cafe, just like her mother Elsk used to do. This surprised and shocked Jonas a little. He had also started feeling quite unfocused of late. He was agitated and couldn't concentrate. In the last scene, we see Betrake in ghostly form with many other women ghosts. They were looking at Hannah who was with that evil entity that rose from the corpse. It killed Betrake and took over her body. This entity was Feek. With this, the film ends. Let's see what happened here. Feek in her vengeance wanted Helen to repent. She made a deal with Moloch and agreed to offer her unborn child as a sacrifice. 
I think the story that Sonia read from the internet or the kids performed at school is not entirely accurate. People thought Feek sacrificed herself by cutting her throat. Moloch killed Halen as promised. Hence in folklore, Feek was hailed as a heroine who stood up against the oppressor. In reality, what happened was Moloch killed Halen and Feek delivered her child. When Feek had a girl grandchild she cut her throat and possessed her daughter. Her body was buried in the bog. This cycle is repeated every 30 year and will repeat for eternity. The women were all related and belonged to different eras. They all had been possessed by Feek and ultimately made the sacrifice. Mola claimed the souls of these women. That's why they were roaming in ghostly form. Elsk was next in line hence she was having a mysterious illness. Feek had now moved into Betrik's body, one day she will slit her throat and give her daughter, Hannah, to the heathen god. In the last scene, we see that Feek was sitting with Hannah. The women were forced to do that by Moloch no matter how unwilling they were to sacrifice their daughter. Vengeance had a cost and they had to fulfill it. Betrake's soul had been claimed by him on the very same night that her mother killed herself. These women's ghosts were whispering to people, not Helen. They were making them dig their graves. Radu first tried to kill Elsk as she was the Feek. Relof also tried to strangle Elsk. Elsk killed the first guy that is Bagman. I guess here the curse will never end, Feek would never stop possessing the bodies of the women and making the sacrifice as per her deal with Moloch. Moloch stood by what he had told Feek, she would have to pay a huge price for vengeance. The moral of the story is that diluting in vengeance is a costly affair. It harms the victim more than the one who has committed wrong. Feek wanted Helen to repent, and though she was successful in making her do that, she never really freed herself from that bitter cage. If Feek had forgiven Helen she might have killed her which was still better than this eternal hell. Of course, by making a deal with Moloch she freed people from the tyranny of Halen and her husband, she became a legend but at what cost? All her future generations paid the price for it. Here people were celebrating Moloch as a benevolent deity but he was malevolent. Overall it's a superb movie, it keeps you engaged. It's worth watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give it a like. Thanks for watching. Take care.